Hey guys, how are you doing? i uh, just doing a transmission about a session that I had with a client. And I feel like this is really good information for everybody because this is something we can pretty much all relate to um, in the scope of our career, our purpose, our jobs, things like that. Um, and so I'm, I'm not going to give you information about this session or who it was, but the channeling of the information that came through. So stay tuned. Hey guys, so I was talking with a client and she had come in uh, for a coaching session and the client was talking about how her job doesn't make her happy um, and that, that she feels devalued um, of the work that she does and, you know, of who she is. And so no matter what job they took, um, it was like that, right? And so I'm going to share with you the information that came through um, about that um, because I do, like I said, feel like this is important for a lot of people because we're a lot of us may be in that situation, right? And we have to really understand everything is about understanding ourselves and who we are and how we're showing up in the world. And the example that's going to be given is related to, you know, everyone because if we understand who we are then we're understanding what we are here for what we've come forth for and what to bring into the world by who we are right so if you're somebody who is an artist and you're trying to be a doctor you know you're kind of going against the grain of the energy right and so why are we trying to be a doctor when we're uh, authentically an artist, or if we love animals, why are we trying to work with people, right? It's going against the grain of who we are, and we don't feel, it brings up this feeling of not feeling valued for who we truly are, because we're not in alignment with who we are and our divine purpose. And a lot of us, have, a lot of us find our way through this because uh, we end up in places that we really don't want to be, and it doesn't make us happy, and nothing can make us happy. The only thing that can make us happy is us, right? And so, to make yourself happy, you have to find out who you are. You have to turn in, not outside, right? And so I'm just going to go through. I went back and listened um, to, and I wrote down. So I'm just going to read what had come through that session um, for us. And so this is basically kind of what it was saying. It was saying jobs are for surviving, not thriving, and enjoying life unless it is what you love to do. So if you're doing something you don't want to do, you're not thriving. You're suffering the identity of who you are because you think you are this, but you're actually this, right? And so they don't line up and they collide the energy, right? And that's where you get the feeling of being devalued because you're not doing your worth, if that makes sense. And you're not making the money that you should be making from that point of view. You're making the money from this point of view. And that separation, right? The energy of vibration separation from it, yourself, right? So when you're doing something just for money and to get by, right? Because a lot of us, why do we take the job? Because we need money. We need to get by. We need to survive, right? So jobs are not surviving, right? And basically, when there's a job, it's because we're working for somebody else who has their divine goal met, right? And so they've created what they want to create. <clears throat> In the process, they've created jobs for others to work to help them meet their goal and what they want to create. So you're working to fulfill them, not yourself, if that makes sense. You're making the money to meet your goal of surviving, but you're not meeting your goal in thriving, right? To what you want to create, because when you create what you want to create, then you can create opportunities for other people to work for you, right? And so you're either plan A, right? And I talk about plan A, plan B a lot. Plan A is who you are, what you're doing, what you're meant to do. Plan B is a backup. So plan B is what you're doing either to get to that place or you're doing it because you don't know yourself and you don't know what you're supposed to do, right? And so you take this as preferred um, over that because you don't know that yet, which is just knowing yourself, 
what you've come to bring to the world, right? The picture. If you like public speaking, why are you trying to be um, somebody who's sitting there in a, a locker room or stock room stocking things, right? You're out of alignment with what you're meant to do and how you're supposed to show up in the world, right? There's a lot, you know, that goes into understanding this and a lot of people don't get the concept of this just because all they see is I'm not happy here. And they don't look beyond that any more than that. So they change jobs. One job, and I've been there, I've done it. One job to the next job to the next job to the next job. And it's all the same. And it's because you're not doing what you're meant to do, right? And so you're devaluing your purpose. It's not who you are or what they are. They're, they're just bringing that to you, to show it to you, to bring it up in within you, to do something else, do a different change who you are. But if you're going from job to job to job, trying to find that happiness, yes, maybe it's helping you seek what it is that you like, but you turn in to find out who you are, right? Because otherwise it's just unhappiness, 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 right? And by the time we get to the end of that, we're all worn out, right? And that'll go into thoughts here, this channeling. Um, and so when you are doing something just for money and to get by it is what you are going to get out of it. So what you're putting into it is what you get out of it. So if you're getting a job just because you need the money, that's what you're going to get out. You're not going to get any value out of it. It's a job to do as a job. And that's all it is, right? <clears throat> Which leads to the feeling of emptiness and devoid of it. And so it was devoid of it. The value that she had, um, it was recognizing that, uh, you know, from the job, you know, to what she, was the main purpose of, of what we're doing, you know. And so that is the purpose, which is what is called, and that is calling you, that you may be feeling like this is not what I'm meant to do, or this is, you know, not bringing me happiness. This is not who I am. This is, it's the separation that you're feeling. And it's not really that they're doing it to you. They're helping to bring that up for you to see that within yourself. And there's a reflection of that, which is creating that scenario to bring about that awareness, right? And then from there, it helps us to go on the journey to seek. But if we're going from job to job to job without taking the time because we are not aware, don't know, that we need to seek within ourselves to bring in the world what we're meant to do, you know, because from that level, we're able to bring about you know, what we're doing and to help others, right, from that space. Because if other people are meeting their dreams or goals and they're helping to bring that into the world and then creating jobs for others to work as a way up, right, it's not a way up to reach the highest level or the ceiling or uh, the glass ceiling that they talk about for them, it's a way for you to get to where you're going on the journey. It's not an end all, right? To be working for somebody else for the rest of your life. But a lot of people think that's what it is, right? But it's not. It's something there for you to get yourself to a place where you're able to um, be where you can then start tuning into yourself and what you want to create. It's, it's, a, it's a part of the path, but it's not the path, if it makes sense. Right. But when we start looking at the job as, you know, this is my end all or um, you get one job and you stay here forever. Right. You're only learning one thing and you run into uh, like a dead end and you feel like you're not evolving or learning anymore. And so you get these emotions and feelings like, you know, I'm not going anywhere. I'm suffering. And then you change from another job and you do the same thing there. It's just a repeat of cycle and pattern. Instead of turning in to find yourself and what you're meant to do, um, a lot of people use this as a way and means to live their life, right? And so it's not really the correct way to come at it from that perspective and for that meaning for your life because we all have something to share and bring to the world, right? And whether that is, you know, whatever has been your experience up until now, it could be just you sharing your life story with others to help other people go into coaching like I do um, um, or to whatever it is that you're meant to do, right? And when you're ready to give up, you know, your job as your means, as who you are, your identity, 
then you're able to start doing some more seeking within yourself, right? And so then you can find that and share that with the world. And then that's when you're going to find your happiness. But your job outside of you doesn't bring the happiness, right? And so just, um, you know, keep that in mind. um, Because like I said, I've been there. I went from job to job to job. And then it's just like a cycle. And it's like, I had gotten to the point where like, okay, I need to move out of here. This isn't it. But then if I, when I went to go look at other jobs and I'm like, no, this is just the same thing. And this is how I came myself to this realization. It's just another job. It's not what I need. And so that set me to look within myself, right? What is it that I'm meant to do? And all that came with, you know, the whole awakening and stuff like that. Then I'm sharing that because I am a creative, so I do art, channeling, information, things in coaching sessions and readings, um, energy healings, right? So, um, which, it, and it, it'll show up for you if you step on the path of seeking your true self, right? Not what's outside of you, because what's outside of you doesn't bring the happiness, right? And But we've, we're taught that we are to be seeking without our outside of ourselves, right? because we're always in service to others, not ourselves. But when we're in service to ourselves, we can bring that out to help others, right? So it's opposite, right? And so the only reason that's come out from that other view is because that's where we were in the stages of evolution. When we're thinking things are outside of ourselves instead of within ourselves, right? It's the, the mirror reflection, right? Right, and so which is purpose, which is what is calling you. Uh, you you, which is why you're feeling misplaced in what you're doing, right? Synonymously, right? What you do and what you don't cause you. So the feeling of not being something you know you should be doing or feeling undervalued is not them, but yourself talking to you. So like I was saying, um, when you're, when you're in that space of feeling undervalued, you're, the situation is going to arise to help you reflect that back to you, right? And so it may feel like it's them um, that's doing it to you. So when you are understanding how evolution works and how things work in the universe, um, you're able to have a better perspective and understanding of it, um, how to maneuver through it, right? Because when we're creating... Uh, based on our feelings and our intuition and our guidance and our spirit, our soul is trying to send messages to us, things and feelings will arise. And then if we're working at a place like she was saying and she's feeling undervalued because uh, she's not living her true self, she's living this false self, this reality that she's been creating that her job is what's going to make her happy. And it's actually devaluing her. And so she has the feeling of being devalued. And so the devaluation creates this experience in our world that we experience, which is like the illusion. But it helps to bring up that awareness to us that we're being devalued so we can start seeking something else, right, that does value us, right? Um, And it's not really that it's them, it's their fault, but we're the ones creating that illusion that makes us feel that way, if that makes sense. And so start seeking yourself, not what's outside of you. Even though it's helpful to be in that space, I'm not saying quit that job, but use it as a stepping stone to get you to where you're needing to be. Take some time to yourself, get away from uh, people. And I'm not saying like forever, you know, but you need that space. You need to take that time to yourself to come to the awareness of what it is that you're meant to do and bring that into the world instead of being ushered by the world, um, what you should be doing, you know, and you need to do this and you do that. But that's just a reflection of what they're wanting you to do, right? Not who it is that you are and what you're meant to do. So it's two different things, right? Um, and then it says your feeling is not them, but yourself talking to you. So you're talking to yourself when you're creating these situations and scenarios, right? And so, so listen to it, the internal guidance system. It's not them saying you are devoid, which is deficient of value. Devoid is deficient of value, right? And it's our consciousness and awareness of it that's bringing about this to us so we can see it. 
right? It's not that it's being done to us, it's the creation of it that's creating the reality, which then can turn into something being done to us so we can see it more on a um, different perspective and level, right? So maybe more intense than what is actually happening. And then you may find yourself in situations where you keep feeling um, devoid or deficient of value, but it keeps creating this resistance and this suffering and this feeling of struggle, um, separation from your divinity, your divine purpose. And from there, it may end up creating situations where you get into arguments with your coworkers or something that's going to end up making you leave there because when we're not paying attention to how we're feeling or what we're experiencing, it becomes more and more and more and more because we're revisiting it and revisiting it and revisiting it and revisiting it and going back to those thoughts and feelings. And when we do that, we are creating the energy of it to become bigger, right? And so it ends up in these big experiences and you can see this like reflective in those experiences where people who are experiencing something re relative to whatever that experience is and then all of a sudden they blow up right because it's been over time boiling up it's been becoming instead of dealing with it you know they burst into whatever and then it's either you know arguing fighting or whatever it is but they blow up right instead of acknowledging the feelings way back here where we become first aware of it and then turn in and to ask ourselves and question. We just ignore it or we just go on in life because we're not taught to question. We're not taught to seek ourselves. We're not taught these things, right? And so through my evolution and understanding and awakening, I've understood this. And so when things arise within myself, I question, right? Because I don't want to end up as that <laughs> that big blow up, right? So I always pay attention and connect to myself right because it's talking to me but the experience outside of the external is the uh, the result and evolution of what's within and so when people are saying what's without is within within without and we're creating our own experiences that's what it's about right so when we're looking at ourselves we're able to tune in and if we do it soon enough it doesn't become this big created evolution of something that we don't want right and so it evolves Right, and so when it's in deficit, deficit of value, of feeling devalued, it is you who is feeling that way, not them, but they are helping you to see that in yourself by uh, being the player in the role that you're creating, they're being a match to it and helping you to see by acting the way that they are, right? It's the scene that it's in the play, right? And so so you're not valuing yourself and aligning with the energy of thriving, only surviving. So you are getting in your own way and out of it, which is the alignment, what you put into it, which is why many of you start to feel worn down in life and on the treadmill, right? So doing this over and over again, going from job, 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 trying to find and seek the happiness that you're never going to find, we get worn down. And sometimes, you know, we um, have... Well, what do you call it? What's the word? Um, resentment, you know, for our lives through that, you know. Um, but we get worn down over time running the treadmill, right? And so over the years of being worn down, you may even regret and suffer your life, right? And then you're mad and angry at the world, you know, by the time you're like 50 and 60, right? You never found yourself, right? And it's basically what that is, finding your true self, right? So many give up, and this is the way life is. Having spent your energy on the wrong return, right? Um, the return is your value, right? The wrong return. Simply because you don't understand life and your role in it. It's what you came here to do and play. And it's called surviving energy is draining, uh, which most of you lead a life of and suffer your existence instead of diving into what it is that you want to do and thrive in living, feeling balanced and well-being right? Being bliss in life, right? Because if you think about it, you're going to work, you know, that's your intention, that's your goal. Um, but then, you know, what are you getting out of it, right? So that's how you're going to live your life instead of 
turning in and finding your own divine purpose. When you have the feeling of your, your, this is what you're doing, you're in joy and bliss, right? And your experience is so different than just going to work and having a job, right? <laughs> so this is two different energy and vibrations. So jobs are, are not intentionally there to make you happy, only those who create them to fill the, their spot, right? But in the interim, keeping you afloat to discover your own true identity and purpose of what you have to bring to the world. So use it as a, um, a way of getting to your goal and your purpose uh, to, for you to create because they've already done it. That's why you have a job, right? And so it's been created there for you to survive but not to thrive, right, in the world. And so which many of you haven't been given this chance to find out who you truly are or capable of being and creating because you've been shuffled off to work, school, and creating family instead. Unless you've had that parenting from childhood, right? And so many of us don't um, because there's this evolution of society that's been created, which we've all been ushered into as we come in in new vibration and energies. Uh, without the awareness, because we just take it up. We just trust when we're born to our parents that they're teaching us and doing the right thing when they themselves may not know either. But we think the whole societal structure, which has been of the past, is something um, that really is existing, but it's only been somebody's dream to create it. And so that has been created and it still exists today. And it will continue to exist unless we change it, right? And i done a video on that. If you don't want to participate in it, um, don't. <laughs> you know, if you don't want it, don't participate in it. It kind of goes into a little bit on that. But and so since childhood, we really haven't had any time for you to linger in exploring yourself, but rushing around like your heads are cut off, trying to figure out who you are and squeezing things in in the midterm um, before they do what they do to you, right? And so if you don't are raised with the an awareness and knowledge that, you know, they're given the time to seek who you truly are, then you won't know, right? And um, I know I haven't, you know, it was like, go to school. Um, parents weren't never there. I had a single mother um, and she was just doing whatever she was doing and then you go to school and then you have kids and then you get into this and you really don't have time to seek yourself you're just going on the plan b what has been set up the framework for <clears throat> the human consciousness to live right you you go to school you go to work you get a job have a family and then you die right that's the framework of the human consciousness <laughs> that's what it's evolved into and you work in the system and you pay your taxes and blah 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 nothing in there about having fun nothing in there about living your life and how you know what i mean um, it's just been this framework that's been created as a um, stepping stone so when you're finally able to start stepping out of that and waking up from it um, you know you're able to start looking at you know okay what do I really want to do? And so there's really no time frame within there that sets it aside where, okay, you know, take, a t take some time, unless it's given to you through parenting or taught you that, um, that, the, you know, you need to take time to yourself so you can find yourself and then be in the world and get a job and do whatever from that point. But a lot of us aren't taught that. I know I wasn't taught that. Um, kind of had to stumble across that on my own, you know, but, um, you know, now it is my knowledge that I have to share with other people because I've been through it. And I don't really um, share things that I haven't been through. I haven't gotten as downloads information because I don't want to share false information that I have no idea on um, or haven't had experience myself. So, and so instead they have it all planned out for you, which is the framework, right? Uh, what they want you to do until you're willing to take back your own power, which is to seek yourself. Right. And so from seeking yourself, you're able to find your own path and what's what's for you to do in the world. Right. Not, you know, just go get a job, you know, because you need to work um, kind of scenario and you need to survive because now you're 16. You have to get out of the house, you know, things like that. Now, I know uh, from past lives. Um, I did a past life regression and 
uh, Native American, they would they would do that, or at least in that scenario, they would do that because they would, once you reach a certain level, you're sent out into the world to discover yourself, right? And then when you found yourself, you, you were become that. So you're either a warrior, a hunter, a gatherer, or you were um, a medicine man or a shaman. And through going out, you know, you were given food and then you went out and explored the world by yourself. You were giving tools um, and then you don't come back or you do come back, <laughs> you know, whichever is going to be the scenario case for you. And on your self journey is what it is. It's a self journey, finding yourself. They give you this time. They don't give you a job, right? But American, a lot of us, we just give people jobs, you know what I mean? Instead of giving you, okay, go out and find yourself. So when you, <clears throat> when you are able to, <coughs> excuse me, when you're able to take time out of your life, go away from people, go live in the mountain or in the woods for a year, take a year off, go find yourself, um, you'll be able to see what it is and who you are, right? Because when you're in society, you have all these voices and all these things, and it's like shiny penny, you know, and you're going to try this, you're going to try that, and you're going to try that, and you're going to try that without really just taking the time and go be by yourself for a while, right? Sit in meditation, right? Do things that where you're by yourself in separation from the outside world so you can find yourself, right? Take that time to yourself. You owe, you, not that you owe it to yourself, but you should do it, you know, because you're here to bring stuff to the world that other people can't. You have a divine purpose, right? And so take the time out to see your true self and your divine gift that you have been given and meant to share with the world. Everyone has a signature imprint within yourself, right? You know, to your DNA, what you're meant to do of what that is. It's not just your DNA of your blood and what science and medicine. Um, there's so much more to DNA that people don't realize the intelligence of it. So everybody has their own DNA structure, which is the imprint of what you're meant to do. And it, your, your DNA has the imprint of everything for you, right? Who you are. And it includes that, right? <clears throat> So you have a signature imprint of what that is, which is what brings you joy, right? So finding your joy, follow that bliss in, within yourself. And so knowing if it's not that, then it's not that, right? If it's not bliss or joy, it's not that, right? But it's not to say don't go get a job, but um, use that if, you, if you're in this place where you can't just take the time to go and find yourself, get away from society, um, then, you know, use the tools that you have to get there. And, but just know it's not the end all, right? So everything that is not your way, right, is bliss to you um, because you don't know your, is because you don't know yourself yet, which is to please others and not to seek yourself in the place in the world, right? So serve and don't ask questions is <laughs> basically, um, what it is serves the world outside of you and don't any, ask any questions of yourself, right? And that's how it's been set up um, as this framework because they want workers. And um, there's been a saying about that, you know, uh, to create a world of workers, not people who are creators in the world who want to create, because, but to work within the system to create for them so they can have um, what they're wanting, right? And so jobs are the same way, you know, people live and they have their own, they create their own businesses and then they need people to work it. And so you become part of that because you're not doing your thing. So you're um, attracted to that, to, to do that for them. So they create, create what they want in the world and they're happy, but you're not. So take a look at that, right? And so um, haven't found your place in the world by being ushered along life without questioning your existence. But if you take the time to question your existence, you will find your purpose. So don't put your value and faith on others for your own worth and don't devalue yourself of your worth by doing something that you're not wanting to do um, or that doesn't bring you fulfillment, right? And so pay attention to how you're feeling about these things and what are you doing? Is this right for me? Does this... I, um, 
Does this make me feel bad when I do it? Is this in alignment with who I am? Uh, for instance, I've had a lot of jobs I left just because of what they were doing were ethical or felt moral to me, right? So don't put yourself at risk for that either. Don't do it just because you're told to do it and that's your job because you have to live it. There's many other jobs that you can take. You're not limited, right? Um, if you have to move somewhere to get a better job, then do it, you know, but don't take a job and do a job because, and you know it's not right to do. Like people who are in these manufacturing company putting toxins in our food, right? How does that make you feel, right? Why are you doing it? Just because of money? Go get a different job, right? Don't um, devalue yourself because you need a job, right? Or something to do to make money so you can survive. Um, there's there's uh, other options out there. And I work with um, the elderly on certain, you know, as because I still do have a job that I do, and I work with the elderly. But, and then some of them, um, even though they're not um, ill or unhealthy or things like that, they choose not to to work, right? Because they're retired. Nobody wants to work once they get to the retire. I understand that. Um, but a lot of them are like, well, I don't have the money for this and I don't have the money for that. But that's our choice, right? It's our choice not to either still work and it's also our choice not to create or seek within ourselves what it is that we want to create to bring in money. And so that puts us into the poverty mind frame, right? So... <clears throat> Um, for me, it, for me, I would use the retirement as a way of income while I'm working on my passion and my goal, you know, um, to help support that versus, okay, I'm retired now. I don't have to do anything and I'm just going to sit here and do nothing and let my health and wellness deteriorate, um, which keeps you from being active and inactive and your body breaking down, um, from non-movement or doing things like that, right? It's staying active. Use those time for you to focus and concentrate on yourself to bring through the world. If you haven't done that yet and you're already retired and you've gone past that stage in your life, right? So always, you know, if you have the opportunity, whether you're young, middle age or older, which really isn't, you're not really aged, that's just your body definition. It's not who you are. <laughs> um, which is a whole nother topic, but if you're, whatever stage you're in, seek within yourself, right? Um, and so we are choosing to do the job we are doing, right? And so no, it's nobody else's fault. We can always change our jobs, right? We don't have to stay where we are. We can always do something else. Um, and so what happens is if you can't find something that brings you joy, what do we do? Just don't do it, right? Um, don't do something else that you can you can find do something else that you can find fulfillment in right i'm not saying don't work i'm just saying don't do that job just find something else you can find fulfillment in because you do need to have some kind of fulfillment from doing your work so if you're just taking a job because it's a job and you're sur you're surviving not thriving you're putting the energy of the negative thriving in it versus the surviving surviving is like not really saying negative energy but it's going against the grain you're Surviving is more of a positive, fun, filled, um, you're getting something out of it uh, versus doing something that you don't want to do. You're putting that negative energy into it. So find something that has at least something in it that brings you joy, some fulfillment. Um, but when you're doing things just to have a job to survive, you know, uh, you're every day going against the grain of energy, of vibration and happiness and joy and bliss in your life, right? And so it's, it's creating this resistance for you actually to move on into something else. So if you're not wanting to do something, you're not happy there at all, you know, find something else to do that does have something that helps bring that energy and vibration in. I'm not saying not do it at anything at all, um, but do, you know, find something else because you know, if you're, like I said, putting toxins into food, working in these factories, things like that, and you know it's creating issues for people, why keep doing that, right? It, be aware of what you're doing. What, how are you contributing? What are you putting into the world? What are you doing? Um, are you a person who's going around spraying chemicals all over the ground, right? And things like that. Um, 
what is it that you're doing? Is this job really bringing joy to you? Or how can you do that something else that will bring what is more in alignment with who you are? Like I said, I left a couple jobs that it just didn't go with my morals and ethics. And once I realized that I left, right? And so, um, because it wasn't something I wanted to be a part of, right? And so, um, just be a patient, you know, aware of those kinds of things. But um, so what happens if you, if we can find, what happens if we can find something that brings you joy in what we do, right? So don't do it if you can't. Find something else, which we can, uh, do, or, and then do something else that you can find fulfillment in, right? Or do it for a reason other than what you're currently doing it for. Uh, that doesn't bring you value to your life, then find something outside of work that brings value and enjoyment in life. So if you can't find a job that does bring you any kind of fulfillment, do it outside of work. Do it at home. What brings you joy? What brings you bliss, right? Allow that energy to go into your daily, um, your daily work, meaning, you know, although this is a job that I don't want to be doing, it's not my purpose, right? But this is helping me to do this, right? And so you're using this as a stepping stone, not an end all, right? Which is two different energies, right? And so, um, again, you know, just, you know, navigating the job realm um, or our purpose, our divine purpose um, of what we're meant to do. Um, if you want any more clarification, want to book a session, uh, you're more than welcome to reach out to me and we can do that one-to-one. -one. All my stuff is done online, one-to-one, um, uh, -one, like with uh, Zoom. Um, so definitely reach out to me if you want to do a session. But I hope that's been helpful for anyone struggling with the work balance and your infinite life purpose. Happy journeys.